Well guys, in case you wondered what this is, this is an impeller pump for uh, indirect cooling or direct cooling depending on what system you've got. Um, typically these um, draw up water from the river or the ocean or the, just the canal that you might be on. So we call them a raw water pump because it's raw water, it's untreated, un unclean in that sense of the word. Um, the job of this is to, to uh, allow a cold medium to take away the heat from a heat producing mechanism such as an engine. In this case it's a marine engine, so it's a Perkins 4108 we've got this attached to. Um, it's leaking out the seals. We'll get it stripped down, have a look inside, see what's going on. Offer a couple of little tips and tricks for you all. Um, and yeah, hopefully you enjoy this. quick example of where we are. So this is your bearing I'm holding and your shaft will spin in there. This is your drive member which goes into the hub inside the engine and that's what causes the pump to rotate. But if you can see these grooves here, um, I'm going to clean that, put a straight edge on it and show you how bad this is. one of the worst ones I've seen in a while. So here's a typical engineer's rule. Um, it's a good enough straight edge for this purpose. So what I'll do here is put this on uh, and put it on the flush. And I don't know if you can make it out on camera. If you're looking through the light clearance in the middle bit where it's wear worn out. So basically, this shaft's had it, it's never going to work. It's never going to provide an adequate seal on the lip seal. The lip seal will, will be pressed around that and what's happening is it's creating um, a place for water to bypass. The fact that it's even pumping is impressive, but eventually that will start to fail and it won't draw any water. So that shaft's had it, it's got to go in the bin. So we'll knock everything else out. And what I've actually done, I knew this would be the case, I brought um, parts to do a, a full service on the pump. So we've got a new plate in there as well. and a new, nice new shaft. So here's my little uh, portable puller. It's actually a hydraulic puller. It's a bit overkill for this, but it'll do the job. I've just got a tissue roll to allow this to drop down in, in below it. Um, there's the old shaft. All I want is the drive member of the back. Um, the rest of it's kind of scrap, unfortunately. That's what happens to used parts. So I need to adjust this to get it in the correct position. Wind it back. Yeah, it's a great little pillar this. It's amazing what I've managed to use it for. make out the wear on the groove here I'm tapping my finger there's a great big hole I would say it's about a millimeter so basically what happens is uh, 
Lip seal wants to work with the lip facing that way. Um, because on this particular part, this is what drives the impeller. So the water pressure is on the inside here, pushing against it. So the way lip seal works is pressure will go inside the lip and the pressure will push the lip into the, the shaft that's rotating. If you had the, the lip seal on the wrong way round for the point of pressure, the pressure would work its way out because the springs would just lift out. So you need to put the, the, the lip seal on the point of pressure. So in an engine, for example, where the oil pressure is, you would see that this side is facing inwards. And that's why you see that like that. So yeah, so that's basically a spline shaft that drives the impeller, like so. So apart from that bit, much of everything else there is uh, going in the bag of uh, scrap or emergencies. I'm off to New York, I haven't got an impeller. Not that you'd be going to New York on this boat. I use a socket uh, um, extension just because my um, puller head wouldn't actually reach down inside the, um, you can see the diameter there is not, it's not small enough, so I needed something to actually reach inside there and pop that down. So here you can see outlaid before me all the old parts on this side, so it's the, the impeller that was in there, that is actually still okay, um, but we'll put it in a bag and save it. The old lip seals, the old shaft, the bearing, the wear plate for the inside of the back of the pump, the front plate, the old screws. So here we've got the new screws, new lip seals, we've got the um, silicone pre-lube to pre-lube it before it runs up, which you must do, otherwise they can burn out very quickly and destroy the new impeller. Gasket, new front plate, new wear plate for inside, new shaft, new bearing, new case uh, body uh, gasket to the engine and new impeller. Now I've just noticed something really curious actually. I'm gonna wait and see if you can all spot what's actually going on with this. So these are the new screws, but one of them has got a slightly weird thing going on. I actually noticed, and I didn't notice until now, that's not got a thread on it. It's, it's been sent out blank. But that's not a problem, I've got a tap and die in the van, I'll, um, I'll grab that out and we'll cut that so it's a complete set. But there we go, we'll get the pump built up now. I'm bringing it back, the camera overheated so I have to turn it off and turn it back on again. I'm just getting set back up again here. Uh, I've got my uh, makeshift bucket, which is my tissue roll. Um, being my roll means you can, you can carry as much as you want, but the van gets too heavy and it gets dangerous, so you have to think on your feet while this job. So I'm just getting this ram, little pinpoint, all located. I can just drive this on home.
just wind it all the way down until it gets really, really tight. And that feels like it's bottomed out to me. Perfect. There we go, new shaft inside the housing, bearings located inside, all concentric, all lovely, seals are all good, let's get the impeller in place. So a little trick for these, just give them a little twist as you turn them in, and they should, it should locate and find its own position on this blinds, a little bit of work on these. And that's that inside. Now I need to pre-lube this. So that's effectively the pump rebuilt now. Um, I'll go and grab the, the dye and we'll cut that thread in a sec. I'll bring it back in a minute because the camera's getting hot where it is. Uh, we'll start uh, assembling this and put it together. So there's your gasket that fits in there like that. It's that simple really. Nothing more to it than that. Might be like that. So I went in the van, had a look at my Imperial tap and die sets and I don't actually have uh, a die small enough for threading this uh, thread here, which is a shame. So I've just had to use one of the old nuts. It's, um, it's uh, sorry, bolts or screws. It, it's, it's not in the world. it's just not quite how I want to do things, but it's fine, it's not a problem at all. Excuse to buy more tools. Yeah. Just trying to choose the best best old screw out of the box here. The one I've got is a bit grotty. I thought I chose the best one out. I think I might put that one back. So I reckon, looking at these, it's the head on more. That's a good one. The head's in good nick, the thread's okay, so I'll give it a quick clean up. Try and hold it with my mold grips, where are they? It's like little portable uh, vices. Mixture of old and new, much like boating is in itself. Good, that's the pump pump. Let's get it back on. Let's put the old bits back away first. I'm not losing. the owner to decide what to do with. So I suggested before, keep the front plate, the impeller, and recycle the rest. So we need to clean the main nuts and bolts that held the unit on, because they're a bit, a bit dirty. Thank you. 
how to rebuild an impeller pump on site. One could take it to a blast cabinet and blast it in the outside of it, not the inside of it. You could go to town and make it really, really shiny, but for all intents and purposes, for a basic engine service, what we're doing, this is certainly uh, good enough and will provide adequate uh, service of the uh, pump. Thank you.